Neo-masculinity can be defined as the behaviours, traits and lifestyle choices that modern men have chosen or been forced to adopt in order to biologically survive and prosper. This is a movement based around reasserting and reclaiming what it means to be a man in the face of decades of cultural Marxism and feminism that has scorned and undermined traditionally masculine characteristics and male confidence in general. Men are confused. They're bewildered. They've been lectured that the innate behaviours, feelings and characteristics that defined masculinity for generations are sexist, malevolent and need to be abandoned if men are to have any success with women. The moral relativism and hedonistic nihilism of the 90s and 2000s entrenched this outlook. Neo-masculinity is a backlash against this cultural re-education. It differs to MGTOW, men going their own way, in that it's an uncynical philosophy which rather than abandoning relationships altogether seeks to repair the massive damage that third wave feminism has inflicted on healthy gender relations. All right, everybody. So we're going to respond to uh, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, uh, Alex Jones uh, affiliate uh, or, or lackey or whatever you want to call him. We're going to respond to his video uh, on neo masculinism or whatever he's calling it. Now, we're just going to get straight to it. And, you know, I would just want to put it out there that, you know, if he disagrees or if Alex Jones disagrees with anything that he's hearing in this video, well, he's more than he's more than welcome to invite me on the show for a bit of a chat. Right. So uh, we could do that. You know, maybe they'll maybe they'll hear this video. Maybe they won't. But who knows? But I'm sure I'm going to take the time to debunk some of the points that he makes. Now, in this video, uh, in the beginning, we see uh, Paul Joseph Watson opening up with what is essentially a rebranding of MGTOW principles tweaked to suit his and Alex Jones's uh, conspiracy agenda, where fault cannot, and I want to repeat this, cannot be put on women, but where it is instead put on the shoulders of an overarching and largely male nefarious conspiracy theory, the Rockefellers, you know, whoever, right? So, so despite his claims otherwise, in this video, this is an exact equivalent to uh, the feminist version of patriarchy theory, some malevolent but unseen and shadowy entity that somehow uh, keeps the man down, as opposed to feminism where men, you know, are kind of colluding in this shadowy way, this undefinable way to keep men down. Now, I've discussed this in previous videos, but for now, we're just going to put that aside. Uh, continuing on into Paul Joseph Watson's video, he then tells men how they're, quote, confused setting the stage for what will become uh, what is, according to him, a mass reorientation of men toward the roles that he claims are proper for men, which, of course, according to him, are the roles of provision and protection and loyalty and sacrifice on the part of men in exchange for their families and children back from the women who, according to Watson, have all been entranced by a cultural Marxist agenda. And, and the interesting part is that in saying all of this, while he's saying it, he pans to a picture of assorted figures from the 90s and ascribes this moral collapse of traditional gender roles to the, quote, moral relativism and nihilism of the 1990s. Now, many of you, I'm sure, will be already familiar with these pejoratives, you know, uh, cultural Marxist, crypto Marxist, nihilist, etc. You know, I don't really have time to explain to you how this language is generally used as a smear by the various gynocentric Manosphirian communities that currently exist as we know them, other than to say that what you're currently experiencing right now with people like Watson and with what's been going on for a while now in the Manosphere is a galvanization in response to the increasing popularity of MGTOW against MGTOW by the various sub-factions of the Manosphere that until now have managed to conceal that their entire existence and mission is really just a derivative of a massive, sustained mating ritual of sorts, right? MGTOW, uh, it seems, puts a giant wrench in the plausible deniability of these subsections of the Manosphere that want to keep operating under the banner of wishing to help men while maintaining their not-so-hidden-anymore gargantuan, slithering, writhing, pus-filled, you know, mating rituals. Now, frankly, this is just one giant appeal for from men uh, and the men that make up these communities to say to women will you please like me again 
right? And it's also just one big chance to say, well, look, look, those guys over there, they play video games. They're losers like us, like us instead. Please, please, pretty please like us. Right? The only difference between this Watson character and the communities in the Manosphere that suffer from these same afflictions is that Watson is frankly just more open about it all. And as you'll see in the video, there will be several moments where he appears to be just blatantly almost begging women, right? Like people would in, in one of those VHS mail-in dating services of like the early 90s, right? If you think back to like Mad Magazine's uh, lowered expectations comedy skits, right? If you remember those, that's what it seems like. And what's funny is that, you know, as he's hurling these pejoratives and blaming, you know, the 90s on it, 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 it flashes to a collage of prominent figures of the early 90s and early 2000s uh, that flashes before the screen as if to indicate which influential cultural figures are to blame for this and the list of people are sometimes you know bewildering and other times kind of downright hilarious there's uh, people like Kurt Cobain prominently displayed and on this particular character I can agree that uh, Cobain was a very self-loathing uh, man regarding especially you know his own masculinity but I, for one, tend to see him more of a victim instead of a perpetrator. We all know that he was essentially surrounded by, like, grunge punk rock feminists, right? And, of course, masculinity isn't allowed to flourish in an environment like that. But all of this is, is, is a topic for another video, right? Another figure on display is, is Michael Jordan, one of the most successful athletes of all time, and certainly not someone who had a lack of women available to him or, or some kind of crisis in masculinity. Uh, the, the rest of the prominent figures are, you know, self-made millionaires, some rappers, some pop artists. But, you know, this is what you find out with these people is they're always looking for some kind of cultural mimetic to blame. And these cultural reflections, of course, are at best reflections of the moral decay Watson references and cites in this video. Definitely not the cause, but, but whatever. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, because he then goes on to posit a philosophy of what he calls neo-masculinity, which differs from MGTOW according to him in its, quote, non-cynicism. That is, it is seeking to repair the damage that feminism has done to relationships and men and women. And, of course, he conveniently leaves out that it was not feminism, in fact, that has damaged relationships between men and women, but women. Women themselves did it, right? He blames the person who led a horse to water instead of the horses that drank from the pond and neglects to mention completely the free and 100% voluntary choice that women have had throughout feminism to divorce their husbands or, uh, you know, use the child support rackets to, uh, to extract money from their boyfriends or whatever. So no mention of divorce that women initiate in the vast majority, right? No mention of any of this. So I'll let you listen to a little bit more of the video here. So what are the traits of neo-masculinity? This isn't just about acting like a stereotypical alpha male. It's an entire lifestyle optimization program that encompasses many facets. Understanding game and the true nature of women, which we'll cover in a moment. Self-improvement. Instead of checking out and wasting time by playing video games, like the Sexodus crowd, neo-masculinists are constantly working to be better disciplined, self-reliant, and more individually responsible. This in turn boosts their sexual market value, SMV, and makes it easier for them to attract women. Physical fitness is at the core of this philosophy, notably weightlifting. But not for narcissistic gratification, but again to instill self discipline, and confidence. Lifestyle optimization in general, sleep, diet, choosing the right social environments, and friends, living ethically and operating at an elevated level of consciousness, building a customized lifestyle that combats the human tendency to be dysfunctional. Politically speaking, it's about rejecting socialism and dependency and embracing entrepreneurship and hard work. Embracing neo-masculinity requires high levels of testosterone, which is why it's interesting to consider the fact that, for whatever reason, levels of testosterone in men have been dropping at a rate of 1% per year since the late 80s. This could be one explanation for the rise of metrosexuals and beta men. In the meantime, though, how is the rise of neo-masculinity going to affect dating and mating? In the past, to a large extent, all men had to do to attract women was to share resources. 
as a result of a woman's basic survival needs now being met without the need for a man, thanks in part to the growth of the welfare state, this no longer works. And that's part of the reason why, statistically, women are getting married at a later and later age. Feminists have made housewife a dirty word. Despite it being equally as tough and important as pursuing a career, women have been taught that devoting their earlier years to bringing up children makes them a failure. Thanks to the evisceration of traditional gender roles, women in their 20s are now behaving more like men. Sleeping around with bad boys and becoming obsessed with hypergamy, constantly on the lookout for a better option instead of committing to a quote, nice guy. Which is why this new breed of neo-masculine men have to deploy all kinds of manipulative mind games and techniques as a way of reorienting women back towards embracing the natural, attractive male traits that feminism has brainwashed them into thinking are brutish, arcane, and misogynistic. This is why game and pickup artists in general are more popular than they've ever been before. Men are having to resort to taxing and sophisticated methods to be successful with women, because many Western females have beauty expectations way beyond their own level of attractiveness and place less value in basic upfront honesty, trust, hard work and the provision of resources. Women are wearing the trousers in terms of the dating game throughout their 20s, but once they hit 30, the roles are rapidly reversed. Women have been re-educated through third wave feminism and fluid dating to believe that they can spend their 20s, which represents the peak of their sexual market value, SMV, bed hopping instead of finding and committing to a long-term partner. This works for a while, but as soon as they hit 30, a woman's SMV, i.e. her biological value to men, begins to plummet, and she finds it harder to attract and keep a high-value man. This is where we see the classic cat lady stereotype come in. In other words, women going their own way, satiating their unsatisfied biological urge for children by acquiring pets and treating them as babies. Neo-masculinists are aware of the fact that men don't share this problem because their sexual market value, if anything, increases after they hit 30 because they're acquiring more confidence, influence and resources all of which are the most innately attractive traits for young women, no matter what feminists claim. To be neo-masculine is to understand these fundamental truths. For men, the most attractive traits in a woman are youth, beauty, and fertility. No amount of feminist brainwashing about the beauty industry being an artificial construct of the evil patriarchy can change this basic biological fact. For women, the most attractive traits in men are social value, influence, and resources. This combination worked well for thousands of years, and humanity prospered. But thanks to feminism and cultural Marxism, gender relations are in disarray, and both sexes are in a constant state of confusion. In many ways, the MGTOW movement, men going their own way, and the sexodus, men checking out of dating and relationships altogether, is the bastard child of third wave feminism. The two feed off of each other. In this environment, only men who transcend the sexodus and adopt neo-masculinity can have much hope of enjoying relationships with women who don't end up destroying their confidence and then driving them back to the sexodus. In many ways, gender relations would be much healthier if men didn't need to adopt neo-masculinity in the first place to attract women. But thanks to the attack on traditional gender roles and the feminist re-education of Western women, loyalty, honesty, and hard work are no longer seen as fulfilling enough traits for modern women until they begin to wise up when they hit 30 to 35 by which time it's too late. This is why women who buy into third wave feminism and avoid the decision to commit to a high value man until they hit their 30s 
are going to get rejected by high-value neomasculine men to a greater and greater degree. Neomasculine men, who in the long term will make far better relationship partners for women in comparison to metrosexual men, are just as rare as neo-feminine females, and their standards are extremely high. So whereas they may date lots of women, they will refuse to commit to a female who is still under the trance of cultural Marxism and therefore more likely to cheat on them. Metrosexual men, on the other hand, are less likely to be bothered by this because they have little self-respect and are willing to be treated like crap. Long term, this benefits neither gender. So in summary, neo-masculinity is the backlash against third wave feminism and the environment and conditions that has created for dating and mating. It's about rejecting the attack on traditional masculinity and reasserting the ethical foundation and self-respect of what it means to be a man. So, from here on out, Watson lists the traits of neo-masculinity and calls it an entire lifestyle optimization program. That sounds fancy, doesn't it? Uh, you see, I want to make a correction here. What Watson just did is that he uses the manipulative sales technique of creating a two-tiered and yet equivalent distinction where the latter distinction is offered up as superior even though it's the same exact thing as the former distinction, right? So listen to this here again and we're going to see if you can catch it here. Okay, so he says, quote, so what are the traits of neo-masculinity? This isn't just about acting like a stereotypical alpha male. It's, quote, an entire lifestyle optimization program that encompasses many facets, end quote. Right? So on one end, he, he, he seeks to denigrate, quote, acting like a stereotypical alpha male. And he does this likely to lull the increasing number of men that are rejecting PUA, you know, alpha beta dichotomy bullshit. Uh, he does this to lull them back to sleep or at least get them off their guard. And then he says, quote, it's an entire lifestyle optimization technique that encompasses many facets. So basically, it's, you know, after he tells you it's not like acting a stereotypical alpha male, he then goes on to tell the very suggestible men listening to him that you can achieve neo-masculinity by acting like a stereotypical alpha male. You know, it's, it's one part recycled PUA tropes, it's one part Hallmark card marketing, and another part, you know, using impressive sounding but meaningless words to persuade the listener. It's really a form of manipulation that advertising agencies employ to simple-minded women to get them to part with their money, or should I say, you know, their husband's money, usually. You know, it's kind of like saying, are you tired of having frizzy hair and split ends? Well, if you buy our Neo shampoo, you won't have that problem anymore. What is the patented formula of our Neo shampoo, you say? Well, this isn't just like any other shampoo on the market touting itself as the next big thing. It's a holistic, retin-A micro-infused hair treatment system with patented surfactant beads, right? It's nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's essentially saying, you know, are you tired of the old shampoo? Well, here's the same old shampoo repackaged with pretty new colors. Now give us your money. Right? And after this, he continues to recite his list of the tenets of new masculinism or neo-masculinism, which basically amounts to like Barnes and Noble's bookstore level generic self-help platitudes. Right? He mentions game and knowing the true nature of women. Uh, what he leaves out is that MGTOW have in fact deciphered the true nature of women. I would argue that they've done so even more thoroughly than even the PUAs without the negative side effect of then having to organize our entire existence into pursuing a giant sniff and whiff of pussy. Because you see, yes, Paul Joseph Watson, some people, believe it or not, consider it a worthwhile way to pass the time by playing a video game or two. And no, this is not giving up on life, it's a hobby, just as valid as anyone else's. It's escapism, and you know what? Everybody does it. Now, as much as, you know, Alex Jones, your obese, overweight boss, claims that football is a psyop by the New World Order, 
He sure looks, judging by his size, like he regularly plops himself on the couch to watch some sports events and waste the time away, no matter how many, you know, tangy tangerines he drinks, okay? You know, I guess that disqualifies him from being a, you know, quote, neo-masculinist, according to your very own logic and standards. Now, Watson seems to infer, after this, that neo-masculinists, in comparison to MGTOW, pursue self-reliance and self-discipline. The mistake he makes, of course, in saying this is that MGTOW also pursues self-discipline and self-reliance, right? We have been for a long time, you know, long before he came up with this silly neo-masculinist nonsense. Then he goes on to list physical fitness, right? Things like weightlifting as, as, as a tenet of neo-masculinity. And again, this is just generic, simple ass shit that, you know, I actually support. Right? I think men should lift weights and exercise. It feels great. It's good for you. And again, I'm absolutely sure that plenty of MGTOW do lift weights. This is a non-issue and certainly will not do a damn thing to combat bias in divorce court laws or feminism as a whole. It will simply you know, improve your overall health and perhaps slightly raise your chances of meeting some women that are attracted to a, mus to a muscular male frame. Which again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this other than the fact that Really, the way uh, Paul Joseph Watson is proposing this, it's just old repackaged self-help nonsense being peddled as some new age uh, hipsterish manhood, right? This weightlifting stuff is particularly bizarre since it seems to come invariably from people who do not appear to regularly lift weights at all. Uh, if you remember, Aaron Clary made this, this same you know, argument, but looking at Clary, I would wager that he either doesn't lift weights at all or lifts very little. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't go to the gym too, too much these days. But you know, I'm just gonna be straight up honest with everyone here. Uh, the most weight I've ever bench pressed was uh, 215 pounds. Right, that's the most I've ever bench pressed. Uh, these days, I'm lucky if I can regularly rep 175. Right, and I don't know where this puts me on on the scale of neo masculinity. And frankly, I, I really don't care because I'm not the one attempting to disparage men for the crime of not lifting enough weights. Or playing too many video games. Watson is, right? Who, again, doesn't really look like he's some ripped weightlifter, if you ask me. Right? And, and then he then goes on to talk about lifestyle optimization and eating a healthy diet and surrounding yourself with the right people, right? Again, all things that MGTOW do not oppose and even encourage to varying degrees. But generally, when it's all said and done, these are just Hallmark esque platitudes feel-good nonsense. It's the same type of phraseology perfected by shysters such as Joel Olstein and his, you know, prosperity doctrine, right? It's feel-good, simplistic flotsam that amounts to an adult version of telling kindergartners that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. It's bullshit. And he then talks about, you know, rejecting socialism and embracing entrepreneurship and hard work. And again, nothing wrong with that, but again, simplistic. It's, it's the American dream mantra repackage. It's nothing new, nothing insightful here. And then he talks about the dropping of testosterone levels in men and how it's interfering with all of this, right? You see, there's always some kind of you know, lofty solution that isn't anybody's fault, but some shadowy enemy, the New World Order, far, far, far and away, you know, hold up in their ivory towers or, or their fucking underground bases. Now, if you know anything about InfoWars, right, and Alex Jones and Prison Planet and all that, you'll know that this is when the giant, bloated, and obsolete propaganda engine, that is InfoWars.com, opens up its maws and attempts to scoop up fledgling movements like MGTOW into its gullet in hopes of cannibalizing and assimilating sharp, focused, intelligent, grassroots, internet-inspired thought into their giant, Borg mission of defeating the New World Order, right? This is the part where Watson is setting the stage for Alex Jones to eventually claim that misandry and the societal attack on men we see on at every level of society is all some giant result of the New World Order pumping, you know, xenoestrogens into the water. And if you just drink some tangy tangerine or, you know, super male vitality, it'll all just go away. This is how mission creep is implemented. This is how controlled opposition is developed by associating ourselves with outfits such as InfoWars where good ideas go to die or to be consumed and then die to feed the jihad against the New World Order that is, according to Alex Jones, 
going to declare martial law and put us all in FEMA camp something on the order of 20 years ago. So Watson then goes on to blame feminists for making the word housewife a dirty word, despite the fact that, uh, where have we heard this before, according to him, being a housewife is just as hard as pursuing a career. Oh, how nice. <laughs> right the reality of course is that no no it's it's not just as hard as pursuing a career if, if you, you know if you remember the the bill burr uh comedy skit right you know why don't you tell that to 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 you know coal miners why don't you tell that to aeronautical engineers why don't you tell that to a plumber why don't you tell that to a welder why don't you tell that to a taxi driver hmm? of course it's not as hard and i know that and you know why i know that because none of these women are willing to trade their privileged positions as stay-at-home wives for a grueling 60 or 70 hour work week, are they? And in fact, in fact, these same women, these same traditional women start divorcing increasingly and predictably the more money they make in comparison to their husbands. That's a statistical fact. For some reason though, I suspect that this neo-masculinity will not include telling women to take on a more fair share of the financial burden by working more hours so that men can get more time with their children so as to not be seen by their children as some distant, far away bill payer, right, by your own progeny during the most formative years of their life. Nope, none of that. You're not gonna hear any of that from Infowars, I guarantee it. And of course then, you know, you get the subtle jab at other men for getting women to sleep with them instead of him. And that's what it's really all about. Remember, keep in mind, keep in mind, this is just some giant mating strategy to these people. It's all about how we're going to impress women back onto our, quote, our side. You see, feminism has corrupted the pure, virtuous Western women, and now she's having sex with all those evil bad boys. Man, they're so fucking evil. They're such assholes. Right? Why do women pick them? Why don't they pick me? <laughs> That's what it is. Right? How about women sleep with whoever they damn well please? How about that? You want? To, why don't we try that out for, for a while, right? How about we stop telling men to bribe women that aren't even attracted to them in particular by dangling this, you know, carrot of a provider job in front of them? How about we encourage men to keep their money in their own pockets and stop being so desperate for female approval. While we're at it, how about we stop telling them to bash other men who these women do have sex with for no other reason other than these women aren't having sex with them. Here's a life lesson. Some women will want you, others will not. Some of these women that don't want you will sleep with other men. And they aren't bad boys or assholes or whatever for capitalizing off of that any more than you are an asshole for sleeping with women that do show interest in you. Right? Every time that you feel that you've been kind of dissed by a woman for a, quote, bad boy or an asshole, you're not thinking when a woman shows interest in you and you end up sleeping with her that there are other guys that want to sleep with her and see you as an asshole. That never occurs to you because as soon as a woman is paying attention to you, you forget about all other men on planet Earth and they can all fucking figure it out for themselves, isn't it? Isn't that, isn't it that how it works? And that's why men are, of course, the vast majority of homeless. And that's why none of these prison planet manginas give a shit about that. Watson then goes on to explain one of the many reasons why MGTOW exists in the first place. And he says that men are now having to resort to deploying all kinds of manipulative mind games and techniques as a way of, quote, reorienting women back towards, get this, embracing <laughs> the natural, attractive brutish male traits that feminism has brainwashed them into thinking are brutish, arcane, and misogynistic. Now, it's amazing, wow, you know, it's amazing how this philosophy he's peddling is called neo-masculinism, implying via the neo-prefix that it is a new form of masculinity, but women, women have to be convinced that the masculinity of a bygone era is what, what, attractive? <laughs> Basically, what Paul Joseph Watson is saying, uh, if you read between the lines, is that this new masculinity he's talking about is just old masculinity repackaged. And, you know, ask yourself the question, why do women have to be convinced of what is, quote, according to him, these are his words, quote, naturally attractive anyway? If I see supple breasts 
and wide hips and a nice ass on a woman, no amount of feminist conditioning is going to convince me that this isn't naturally attractive. Gloria Steinem slept with Henry Kissinger. Do you know why? Because despite what she says about men, and despite what feminists say about men, and despite what women say about men, the qualities that females are attracted to will remain fixed. Powerful men in positions of authority are a natural aphrodisiac to women. And women aren't brainwashed into that by anybody. They aren't brainwashed into not being attracted to these qualities. In fact, what women do is that women lie to the types of men that Watson refers to as, quote, nice guys, in order to use them while she goes ahead behind his back and she sleeps with the so-called bad boy that she has and always will find naturally attractive. Now, this has been going on since time immemorial eons before feminism existed and it will continue to happen after feminism fizzles out. In fact, civilization itself is merely a product of harnessing the nice guy's paycheck for access to reproduction with women that would much rather be dating and fucking the bad boy. And we'd be much better off simply telling men that for a change, they should stop worrying about whether or not women want to fuck them and start worrying about putting more money in their pocket and in their bank accounts. This way, right? Well, maybe you are a so-called beta male or a so-called nice guy. But you know what? You're a beta male with money in your pocket. And you have the freedom to enjoy a lifestyle with it that most married men and their, you know, 60-hour work weeks could only dream of. Because all of that disposable cash goes straight to the wife, straight to the kids, without fail. And if he has a problem with that, well, there's a child support court racket that'll uh, straighten him right out, if you know what I'm saying. Because you see, that is the end result of all this marriage bullshit, isn't it? Obligations at best, and divorce in obligations at worst. And you know what? Maybe you're not a beta male. Maybe you're a, quote, alpha male, right? I mean, these distinctions are silly, but I'm using their language for now, right? Now, you know, so let's say you're an alpha male with, you know, the genetics or the, the charisma or the personality uh, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that allows you to compel women to sleep with you uh, with ease, right? You're still, now, if you keep your money in your pocket, an alpha male with money in your pocket. And no woman on earth, if you don't get married, is going to take that away from either of these men. Because MGTOW told them that they should not get married in order to fix the families women ruined, but that they should instead never get married and let women figure shit out for themselves for once in their lives. See, that's right. Women spit on basic, upfront, hard work and the provision of resources, as uh, Paul Joseph Watson uh, just said here. Right? They spit on that. They feel they're entitled to it and that men should give it to them. And then, on top of this, they believe it appropriate to toss men aside like disposable trash when they no longer can provide it. And that's exactly the reason why men should not provide it. They should invest it. They should invest it into a business or an education or a hobby or a vacation or that's right. That's right, Paul Joseph Watson, even an Xbox. He then goes on and tells us how women, the poor dears that they are, have been re-educated through third wave feminism, yada, 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 blah, blah, fucking blah, right? Uh, and, and you guys know what I'm about to say, right? Pay attention to that language, gentlemen, that little silent capitulation. That, you know, third wave feminism bullshit. That, gentlemen, is how you know you're being scammed by gynocentrists and traditionalists, right? And conspiracy theorists or whatever. Or women against feminism. Because if you aren't willing to say that every single iteration of feminism from the first to the third wave of it and beyond, if you're not willing to say that all of them, all of them were bad, then you are self-censoring for fear of offending women. Or you're a woman with an agenda, i.e. woman against feminism. Do not trust people that talk this way. This is women against feminism speak for the Manosphere's equivalent of the 2008 banker bailout. It's saying, you know, we fucked up, but you, you're going to fix it. And on top of all this, if one is afraid to say that it is in fact, you know, above that, on a whole other level, if one is afraid to say that it is in fact our gynocentric nature as a species... That is causing all of this as opposed to an at best, what, two century old industrial revolution catalyzed phenomena known as feminism. Then they are also trying to scam you or worse yet are incapable of understanding the nature of the problem at hand. Do not trust them. 
Right? So he then compares the stereotype of the spinster cat lady to MGTOW, saying that a woman going her own way is, you know, a woman who satiates her desire for reproduction with animals, in this case, cats. And this is a flawed comparison since one of the core tenets of MGTOW surrounds learning to control your base biological urges and not let it control you or the way you live your life. Now, some of us may want kids, some of us don't, but all of us know the ramifications of reproducing with women these days. And this is why most of us aren't interested in reproducing, even if we do want children on some level. According to Watson, though, this is all going to fit into some grand depopulation agenda conspiracy theory quite nicely, and we'll probably get accused of being minions of the New World Order, or convenient idiots for the New World Order, or what have you. And, of course, when he figures out that MGTOW uh, want things like male birth control, or, you know, want, wanting to reproduce through surrogacy, or, or pursuing basically anything that doesn't give women more control over men and their own progeny, that's what we're going to get accused of. Now the video finishes off with a recap saying that this quote neo-masculinism is about rejecting an attack on traditional masculinity despite again having the term neo or new masculinity in its very name uh, women are brainwashed by cultural marxism you know the deal etc etc again gentlemen i don't like having to do this uh, but at times it is necessary and this is a pretty egregious example of an attempt to coax men back onto the plantation with some new age bullshit and kind of hijack, you know, the ideas that MGTOW has taken a long time to develop. And now these fucking cannibals are going to come in and try to co-op that? Hell no. Anyway, gentlemen, back to business. Thanks for listening.